Hi everyone, my name is Florence and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be chatting about plants that I wish I'd never bought. Now there's a few reasons for the plants on this list, I'll just summarise quickly. Some can be that they weren't right for the conditions in my home and I didn't do research beforehand. Others were from bad shops or bad sellers and I'll cover those reasons why and why I don't necessarily recommend some of the shops that I bought them from and others is because I got sucked in through Instagram. Now this is a massive thing that's being talked about in the plant community at the moment is the fact that we're being shown all of these incredible plants from Asia that are just photoshopped and also in immaculate conditions because the growing conditions are perfect and we're buying these plants because we think that one day our plants are going to look like these whereas in reality they're probably not and I think it's just really important to appreciate what you've got in your plant collection if there's plants that don't make you happy pass them on to somebody who you know somebody else who's starting their plant collection or just sell them and get rid of them you know give them away to charity anything if you, they're not bringing you happiness don't have them in your collection because it's just not worth the stress anyway I'm gonna get straight into this list um, and you'll have seen quite a few of these on my Instagram if you don't follow me there definitely go check me out anyway let's get on with it okay so the first plant that I wish I'd never bought is the small syngonium plugs that you find you'll have seen this in my houseplant tour and you saw how neglected it was it hasn't really changed much since then you can see how dry the soil is but basically I always underwater these and I shove them in a corner forget about them they spring back then I forget about them again and I just wish that I didn't buy these because they're not you know I really don't love them so therefore I don't take great care of them um, I think I'm gonna be passing this one to my mum so that's the first plant the next plant that I should not have bought was this monstera species Peru um, I've just cleaned the leaves off and you can still see how dusty and how much water residue is on this. So this sits at the back of my lounge on the potting station and is just so neglected. Um, I wish that I had space for this where I could really show it off and really appreciate all of the leaves and the new growth. I did recently add a new trellis thinking that that would spur me into action a bit, but it hasn't. Um, I mean there's nothing wrong with this plant whatsoever but I just don't appreciate it because I don't have the space for it, like the right space for it anyway. Um, and you can see like it is really healthy, it's putting out new growth, there's no pests on it. Um, our, water's here, like, our water here is really hard and it does sit next to the humidifier so I do wonder whether that's what all of this residue is. But yeah, if you buy a plant, make sure that you've got the room for it where you can actually display it where you want it rather than just adding it to your collection because it's another plant because that was my mistake with this one. Okay, please don't judge me. This is the most neglected plant in my collection. Um, it sits above my bed and desperately needs a water and a dust. I don't know if you can see just how gross that is. But this is a neon pothos and I really wish that I'd waited until I found a big specimen of this plant at the moment it's so small and tucked away in a corner that I don't really remember about it. So this was actually bought from Boma, I think, um, in Camden or Kentish Town. And it was my mistake for buying this and I just wish that I got a bigger one. Like waited until it, there wasn't a small plant. I mean you can see that it's not really grown. I've had this for about 18 months and it's finally pushing out a new leaf. Um, there is a point on it as well where it's starting to revert back, yeah, here, and also that's probably threat damage, but <laughs> yeah, it's starting to revert back, and for a plant this size, I'm just not happy with it, I wish I hadn't bought it in this size, I do love this plant, but because it's so small, I do neglect it, and that has not paid off, obviously, so... Yeah, if anyone's got any large neon pothos for sale in the UK, do let me know. Um, and then I'll probably give this one away to somebody else. Okay, the next plant's a bit too big to hold. Um, so this is a Raven ZZ and I made the mistake of buying this. Um, I mean, you can see it literally had like three or four fronds on it. And this I bought about 18 months ago. 
I really, really regret buying this because firstly, the plant shop that I got it from was so overpriced. Secondly, I mean, for the price that I paid, I think I paid about 20 pounds for this. And at the time, I'd never seen them in person, made the stupid decision to get this one. And again, didn't have a place for it. I mean, you've seen this in my hallway, in my tour as well. And honestly, like, it could have pushed out so much more growth. You can see that it's not getting the light that it needs, like it's got dead leaves. And, you know, I just, this is another one that I neglect, but I massively overpaid for this, for what I got for it. Um, and that's another thing, waiting another three months, I would have been able to get this for half the price in B&Q. And that is one thing that I think is really, really important for people to remember. I mean, you can see just how big it is there my hand for scale and basically yeah just wait until they become a bit more common if you're not absolutely in love with these plants or any plant in fact wait until they come down in price and it'll be so much better for you and your collection because you won't regret buying it and I don't know about other people but cheaper plants I feel like I care for more just because or like I enjoy them more because the more expensive the plant, the more stress that comes with it. And this, for the price that I paid, was ridiculous. That's just a green ZZ stump, by the way, I added in. So I don't know whether that's a plain ZZ coming up. But yeah, I think if I had the right spot for this and it had grown more in the time that I've had it, I would definitely appreciate this plant a lot more. Okay, so this next one is one that I seriously wish I'd never bought. This is a raindrop peperomia and I got this from Ikea. I got it because it looked sad. Now, all Ikea plants look sad. I didn't have room for this. I wasn't a fan of it before I bought it. It got really bad thrip damage. I treated it and then I just shoved it outside because it was annoying me. And since it's been outside, it's actually been doing really well, but it's also taking up valuable outside space because I only have one window sill. And for that reason, I really wish I'd never bought this. It was really cheap, don't get me wrong, and I don't think, well, I have repotted it since. But for the amount of stress that this has given me, and I'm sure that this has actually brought thrips or scale into my place. Um, yeah, I mean, do your research with shops. Ikea obviously don't, look after their plants the best um, so they probably will have pests and yeah they're cheap but they might not always be the best quality I mean you can see how much of this has died off since I've had it there's another dying leaf there but honestly this grew zero <laughs> you know it really didn't grow and as soon as I plonked it outside all of this new growth has come all of these smaller leaves so yeah these obviously can be outside in shade in summer so if you've got one of these and you want to get rid of it, but you also can't go and meet people for swaps at the moment, then just shove it outside somewhere in the shade and it'll stay pretty happy and healthy until you're ready. But just because a plant is cheap, do not fall into the trap that you should have it. This is a major, major thing that I've run into in my plant collecting very early on. I think I've stopped doing that now, hopefully. But yeah, take time to research your plants and actually see if you want them in your house. The next plant that I regret buying is this Lipoala grandis. Now you can see that it is pushing out new growth, but the brown tips and also just the quality of the plant since I've had it, it came in immaculate condition, um, but since I've had it, I just haven't been able to give it the right conditions for it to thrive and I wish I'd done more research before buying this plant. I wish I'd waited until there was more research um, produced on this plant living in the Northern Hemisphere. So these obviously thrive in much better climates than ours. Um, so I think also it's been pushed on my potting station. They deserve better light. Um, I got it from Aspidistra, I think, um, and I'll put the price on the screen. It wasn't that expensive, so I didn't waste a load of money on this plant, but I just feel that had I bought this six months ago rather than a year ago, I would have been able to give it better care and really make it thrive rather than kind of making it stand still and not really do a whole lot. Um, 
I will say that it's a lot more delicate than I once thought. Um, and that's one thing to consider when getting these, definitely. They need really high humidity. And the thing is that a lot of people contradict what others say. So a lot of people say that this needs very high direct light. Others say this needs no direct light and will burn. And this is the outcome of having it in zero direct light next to a humidifier at the back of our lounge. So yeah, I think had I got this plant six months ago, it would have thrived a lot better. I'm looking forward to keeping this in my collection and trying to give it better conditions so that it does grow into that massive palm. This Hoya, what I think is a Hoya Crimson Queen, I wish I'd never bought it. I bought it really small. It was actually just a few leaves in a pot and it's grown out and it is absolutely stunning. I know all of that white growth needs to go, but at the moment it's surviving. So until it starts to decline, I'm going to keep it on there. Um, this is a plant that I bought because I didn't have any Hoya. Now, that was a really stupid move. I actually don't like this Hoya. It won't flower for me, I doubt, because it's so white and also it's still quite juvenile. And I just really, really wish that I'd never bought this plant. I wish that I'd done research into other Hoyas and I heard other YouTubers and Instagram people talking about Hoya and how amazing they were and they got the Hoya bug. And I thought, I don't have a Hoya, I need one. So I bought this. It was only £4, so it wasn't crazy expensive or anything, but I just don't like it. Um, it really doesn't do anything for me. Since I put it on this planter that my dad made for me, it has gained a bit more love from me, but I just don't enjoy it. And I think that eventually, unless this starts pushing out more green growth, so there's another growth point down here, which has just peaked out. I don't know if you can see these little ones. Um, but unless that starts throwing out some more green, I'm going to give it away. Um, yeah, it just doesn't do it for me, really. And I don't know why I bought it, other than the fact that it was cheap and I didn't have a Hoya. Okay, guys, I don't know if you're ready for this next and final plant. This is the very sad Melanochrysum. <laughs> So this is a philodendron melanochrysum I bought from Eden, Manchester, and I regret buying this. This stump cost me £45 plus postage, and honestly, I've had this for about, what, six, seven months, and it lost its leaves due to packaging problems. This is one thing I really wish people would do and there are a few accounts starting to do this, which I'll link in the comments below. Um, but I really wish that people would leave honest reviews that don't get deleted. So even if that's reviewing on your Google account, on Google, and telling people why not to order from a company, or good things that you've got to say about a company. But I can't say how badly this was packaged. Um, it had two beautiful leaves which snapped off just purely because it was shoved in a box with a bit of paper. And honestly, the roots were non-existent when they came. They were all rotten out. I mean, there was another two nodes on this which rotted. There might be a new growth point there, but I'm not feeling hopeful. And then now that I've actually finally got two tiny leaves, this is rotting out for no apparent reason. Now, obviously that's not the plant's, you know, the shop's fault, but I just feel, had I known more about this shop when I'd ordered from them, I would not have ordered from them. And that is a really big thing. Check reviews and make sure to speak to people in the plant community. Obviously everybody has different experiences, but if there's things that keep cropping up from certain shops, shipping being one for Eden MCR, um, yeah, definitely avoid those sorts of shops. But do you research? I didn't, I just saw a cheap melanocrysum with two fairly big leaves and just thought, yeah, F it, I'll do it, I'll get it. And it was a bad decision. This, I have no idea what's gonna happen with. So that's my melanocrysum. Okay, and there's the eight plants that I wish that I'd never bought. Obviously there's more than that and there's been more than that that I've got rid of or, you know, passed on to somebody else or gifted to people who really want that plant. And I think it's really important just to make sure that you keep yourself happy and keep your plants happy. If you're not appreciating a plant and you're willing to let it die, pass it on to somebody who will appreciate it. 
anyway that's it for this video so if you liked it please give it a thumbs up if you've got any questions or comments please leave them down below and if there's any plants that you regret buying let me know as well because I'd be really interested to see that if you haven't already please subscribe and I'll see you next time bye